Uh, hi there, welcome to the third part of my three-part tutorial on how to create an Unreal Engine movie from scratch. In this part I will show you how to use the movie render queue, which creates a sequence of images, and then I will show you how to convert those images into a movie file. Okay, let's start. So at the beginning, let's recap what we did last time. So last time we stopped after finishing our sequence, and now let's go to the movie render queue. The movie render queue you should already find up here. If you don't have this tab, you can find it under Window, Cinematics, and here Movie Render Queue. Let's go there. The idea of the Movie Render Queue is that you add your sequence here, and then you can change some settings, and after that you click on Render to create an image sequence. Okay, let's start. We click here on Render, and our sequence was named Movie, so just select it. Now our sequence called Movie was entered. The images that will later be produced will be found in the project folder under Saved Movie Renders. And here at the Unsaved Config we can change some settings and we should change some settings. So just click here. I will go now step by step through the most important settings. Here under Exports you can select what kind of data should be produced. So at the moment a JPEG sequence will be created. At rendering you can change some settings and at output you can change the resolution and so on. So at exports I don't like JPEG sequence because JPEGs use a lossy compression and this means that the quality of your image might suffer later. Especially at our scene we have soft transitions between different shades of blue and JPEGs will totally destroy this image and introduce banding and so on. Okay, let's go here to render queue again. And here we just click on it and hit the delete key on the keyboard. And now it's gone. And on this symbol, we can add a new file format. So just let's add a PNG file. Even though PNGs also use compression, they use a lossless compression. So this means there will be no color bending. An alternative to PNG are EXR sequences. They have a higher bitrate and therefore can store higher dynamic range. So if you want to produce an HDR movie, you should select EXR file format. I quickly show you what you could select here. At EXR sequence, if you use it, then you can use the DWAA format, which uses a slight lossy compression, but it will not be really noticeable. And in this way, the file size will not be too big. But for this example, we don't need the EXR sequence, we just need the PNG sequence, so I just delete it again. And before we add more settings, let's go here to Output. And here you can select the Output Resolution. The Output Resolution can be as high as you want and as high as your graphics card can handle. I leave it now at Full HD. And you remember that our sequence was set to 30 FPS. And because of that, we should select here at the custom frame rate 30 FPS too. So click here and then select here 30 FPS. If you don't select 30 FPS, the timing will not be the same as we saw in part 2 of our tutorial. And the rest you can leave. Okay, and now let's add two more options to increase the render quality of our scene later. One option is the anti-aliasing option. And the other option that we need is the Game Overrides option. First, at Game Overrides, this setting just unlocks basically all the limitations of the Unreal Engine. It deactivates all the LODs, it uses high quality shadows and so on. So it cranks up all the settings basically. So you don't have to do it manually. You can just leave it in this way. Usually all the settings are sufficient. And the last part was anti-aliasing. The basic idea of anti-aliasing is to reduce checked edges. Additionally, the settings that I will show you will also increase the quality of motion blur. Okay, there are basically only two settings that are very important. The first one is the temporal sample count. The higher this value, the higher the quality of our final images will be. For movies a good starting point is like 10. For still images when you only produce like one or two images then you can crank it up to 64 or even higher. For our movie sequence I want to use something like 12. This value means that for each of our frames 12 separate images will be produced 
from a slightly different angle and then the 12 images will be combined in a way that reduces aliasing. And you see if you set here a value that is higher than 8 then you get this warning and this warning notifies us that we should deactivate the temporal AA of Unreal. We achieve it by going here to override anti-aliasing and then select here as the method none. And one more setting that we should activate here is this render warm-up frames and enter here a number of at least 30. This has the following background. Many effects, for example, like our um, exponential height fork, Unreal Engine uses the information of several frames to create a decent looking exponential height fork. If you don't set those two settings, then the first frame of our sequence will look like this. And in the following frames, the quality will be better then. However, after we set both of those settings, the first frame of our image sequence will look like this, much higher quality. With this, we are now totally set. So to recap, we selected the kind of image format, we set up the anti-aliasing, cranked up all the engine settings to the max, and set up the resolution and our custom frame rate. Let's hit accept and click on render. A new image popped up and here you see a preview of our final scene. At the bottom right you see that for each of our images a total of 12 frames will be combined and rendered. And this means instead of 781 frames in reality our graphics card will, will render like 8000 frames. And here at the bottom left you see a rough estimate of the time remaining. See you in 5 minutes. Okay, that's it. You can easily access the location of our image sequence by clicking here. And now you see an overview of all our images. Okay, the next step is now to create out of those images a nice MP4 file. So at first create on your hard drive somewhere a folder where you want to save the movie in. I called my folder Unreal Movie. So and now we just download FFmpeg. Download it on ffmpeg.org. In the description of the video you find the download link. So download the package, open it with 7-zip and then just take the file that is located in the bin folder with the name ffmpeg.exe. Drag and drop it into the movie folder. Okay, first step done. Unfortunately, ffmpeg does not have a graphical user interface, so you have to control it with the Windows command prompt. It's not hard and I'll show you exactly what to enter. The second step is to open the command prompt. Go to the start menu and just enter CMD. Click on the command prompt and now we only have to use one command to convert our image sequence into a movie. The structure of the command is as follows. First we have to open FFmpeg. For that we have to enter the path and the file name of FFmpeg. The path we can easily copy paste from the explorer window just click into here, Control C, go back to the command window, Control V, and then enter the file name of FFmpeg, which is ffmpeg.exe. And now we tell FFmpeg, please create a movie with a frame rate of 30 FPS. So for that, we just enter minus frame rate 30. If you created your Unreal movie with a frame rate of 60 FPS, you just enter 60. And then we tell FFmpeg that we want to convert an image sequence into a movie with the option minus F image 2. The next step is to tell FFmpeg where our image sequence is and how the file names look like. For that we set the option minus I which stands for input and now we have to copy paste the path of our image sequence directory. You can find the folder directory again in the Windows Explorer. So I just copy paste here this folder path. And now to the file names of our image sequence. The file names were movie.4digitnumber.png. Okay, so just enter movie.4digitnumber. We tell FFmpeg by entering a percentage sign and then 04D for four digits and then PNG. And in this way FFmpeg uses the correct sequence of our ascending image files. Okay, the next step is to set the quality of our final movie. 
we do it with the option minus CRF, which stands for constant rate factor, and followed by a number between 0 and 51, where 0 stands for no compression at all, which means very big file sizes, but also very, very high quality, and 51 meaning very small file size, but also very poor quality. Reasonable range is between 18 and 27. So because I prefer high quality and a reasonable file size, I use 18, sometimes even lower, like 12 or 14, 15. And the final step is to enter the file name of our movie file. Let's save the movie directly in our Unreal Movie folder. So just copy paste this path again, Control V, and our movie should be called movie.mp4. Okay, to recap, at first we open ffmpeg, which is located in this folder. Then we say, please create a movie with a frame rate of 30 FPS. Please create this movie out of images that are located in this folder and are named in this way. Please use as a compression this constant rate factor of 18 and save the final movie in this folder under this name. Let's run it. And now it's finished. And you see the new movie file in our Unreal Movie folder. Let's check it out. And that's it. I hope you liked my tutorial on how to create an Unreal Movie from scratch. I showed you how to create this swarm, how to set up the sequencer, how to render our movie with Movie Render Queue, and in the end how to create a movie from our image sequence. I hope you liked it and if you have any comments or suggestions then just write them in the comment section. If you liked it and want to support me then I would be happy if you would subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. See you in the next one. Bye bye.